Buongiorno, welcome to my channel. Today I'm filming my everyday makeup look, something really easy that you can recreate if you wanna go to work or maybe hanging out with your girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever you're doing that day. I don't wear a shadow at all because I prefer to focus mostly on foundation. So I hope you enjoy this video with me and then keep on watching. Okay, so first things first, headband. Let's put the hairs out of the way. What we're gonna do now is to put a lip balm. I like to do it before applying any makeup on. Afterwards, my lips will be moisturized. Real quick. You're not supposed to wear primer um, every day. It's something you can skip sometimes, but if you wanna help with longevity of the makeup, it's better if you prime. I am combination skin and I like to prime. This one is from Makeup Forever, step one equalizer. The Mighty Fine one go just over the forehead. This is my problem area. I get really, really oily up here. So just a little bit will go a long way. And then also on the sides of the nose. You don't need to modify the entire face. I personally don't get oily everywhere, just in the T-zone it gets really, really oily. Another primer that I'm really, really liking is the Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primer. This one smooths out your skin so that the foundation will glide on so smooth and seamlessly. Just a little bit on the fingers. Now remember, as I said before, you don't always have to put primer, but it's a good thing if you do, uh, because with primer you have a barrier between the skin and the foundation. Your everyday moisturizer will be just fine. The important thing to do, don't put makeup on your bare skin because of the breakouts that might occur. You, we don't want that. And then, Agama, best tool in the world. I, I truly love it. It's the Beauty Blender. I already wet it and I already used it so it's a little bit dirty. For foundation I'm I'm trying at the moment this one from Too Faced. It's the Bondi Way. It's uh, oil free. I like it because of the of the undertone that it's um, really really warm because I am I am pale but my undertone it's a warm one. I'm I think I'm yellow. So this one fits me perfectly. Two drops directly on the Beauty Blender and then one dot here, here on the chin, nose, forehead, and let's start bouncing in. Make sure you go down the neck. Make sure you blend everywhere. I think it's the best way to apply your foundation. Not with every kind of foundation, but with these liquidy ones, it's really, really good. It soaks up the excess product, so you don't kick it on. This foundation, you guys, I, I truly love it. Okay, so another thing you have to do now, or if you want to, or if you need to, it's to cover up the dark circles. The foundation already did a pretty good job at covering up. I don't have that much of discoloration under my eyes. The only problem that I find that I have is a little bit of wrinkles here. I don't sleep that much, maybe, I admit, I don't know. I hate them. So what I like to use, it's the NARS Creamy Concealer. This one is in the shade uh, Custard. It matches with the foundation. Let's put this bad boy on. Not too much, just a few dots, as you can see. Here. And Because I think when you have wrinkles, you don't need to put too much product on it, or it will be a mess to blend it out. And then what I like to do is first to buff it up with the with a brush. This one is by Sephora. It's the powder shadow number two. 
It's not a concealer brush, but I think this one does the job perfectly. And uh, what I would do is to gently tap it till it's nice and blended. This concealer, it dries fast, it doesn't crease. Of course, you have to set it with powder. So before I do, I like to take my beauty blender, the tip, and then absorb any excess under my eyes. My sexy faces. I dare you to apply your concealer without making this face. <laughs> now let's move on to baking. This is something you might you might want to skip if you have dry, dry skin, but I personally think that it's the only way that I can prevent my concealer to crease. So look up. And with that still dampened beauty blender, I take some of the loose powder and place it under my eyes. Oh, by the way, this one is from La Jolie. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, while we wait, maybe five minutes will be fine. Usually I would fill up my brows, but I already did it off camera because I take so, 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 so long, like 10 minutes or something. And what I use to fill them in is this one. It's my magic tool that I... This will live with me, this will stay by my side. This is my best friend. It's from uh, Peggy Sage. This one is in the shade Havana. And I think it's really, really good for blonde ones because it's almost grayish brown and doesn't give you that weird reddish eyebrows, really fake, that I don't like. I fill them in like so. It's uh, the one that you have to sharpen. It's a little bit crusty, sorry. I really love it, that's why. Another tip that I have for you guys, even if you have dry skin, no matter what, you should always set your makeup because it will help with blending of the other powders that you will put on afterwards. This one is from Rimmel, it's the Stay Matte. It's really good at keeping your oils at bay. So I use it with um, Real Techniques. This is the Expert Face Brush, tap the excess. And then what I would do is to focus mostly here where I will apply my bronzer later on. I find that this helps me with the blending. Blend a little bit on the neck, just in case there's a line between my foundation and my neck. I don't want it, so I make sure that I blend everything out. And then just a little bit on the forehead because we already put the Medifine primer so I don't think I really really need to but I will always like to make sure that everything is set. Like so. Tip on the nose just a little bit. Good. Now what I have to do for my complexion to become alive again now I am really really flat I don't have any shadow any color to my face any life to my face what I will do is to bring this one oh my god this is from Marc Jacobs is the Mirage filter number 40 the Instamark one so good this one has the yellow powder for the highlighting areas and this is the contour contour powder it's so good let me bring this one, this is from Sephora. This is the blush brush. I really like it because it's angled, so it gives me the perfect shape of the contour where I want it to be. And it's a small one, so that it's really precise as well. What I will do is to take just a little tiny bit and then place it not too low, not too high up. I prefer to do it right on the cheekbone to give a natural shadow and then blend it away. I find this powder to be the perfect color for my skin tone because again, this one it's 
almost grayish so it gives a natural shadow to the face as you can see the difference here flat this mm, old chisel if you think you went heavy handed with it you can take a powder brush or maybe this one i really like this this is the blush brush from real techniques it's so big and fluffy what i can do is to go over it and blend it out so good okay to the other side as you can see the dimension came back to my face it's not a flat surface but when you think oh my god she's a ghost she doesn't have cheekbones And then near the hairline because I don't want any of the scalp skin to come through okay now I think we are fine with the baking we can take it off and I take this brush I really like this one because of this dome shape oh my god look at look at that how much powder let me tap it off I clean my brushes. Make sure you always keep your brushes clean. I do it like once a week. And this one is from Real Techniques, is the setting brush. So what I would do is to bring a mirror because instead I'm blind. And uh, gently tap off the excess powder that I have under my eyes. And with the leftover powder that I have on the brush, I like to set my eyebrows. I don't usually set with gels or anything like that. Powder is just fine because of the pencil. The pencil, it's waterproof. You can go by the pool, you can sweat. Your brows will stay on with you all day long. Let me fix. I almost forgot to set my lids because you can see the crease with the back of the beauty blender I tap it away and then with the same brush that I used to remove the bake under my eyes I go on the lids and set them in place here we go So today for my highlighter, I will use this eyeshadow from Kiko. It's in the shade number 16. So pretty, almost champagne-y one. Really not too sparkly. It's so smooth and shiny. Look at that. Look, I don't know if you can tell by, by my swatch. I really like it. So what I will do is to take, again, this powder brush that I used before. I will spritz some uh, fixing spray this one is from smashbox the water primer a few spritz on the brush <sighs> why am i blowing and then dip into the eyeshadow and put it on the highest points of the cheeks oh my goodness a little bit on the brow bone almost like a C shape so that your face will be highlighted where the Sun usually hits your face not too far down but just here oh my god another spritz on the brush we're going to the to the other side boom look at that oh my god so pretty yes it's an everyday makeup maybe you don't need to be highlighted but I like to be highlighty and glowy this gives life to your face I think it gives you dimension it's a nice contrast with the contour that we applied before on the bridge of my nose and on the tip just the tip cool now for blush honestly I don't wear blush every day of the week but I think this one is good for an everyday basis this one is from wet n wild is the color icon 
A blush is the rose champagne. I think this color it's a good dupe for the Nars's orgasm. So good. And I will take from Real Techniques. This is the stippling brush. I think with this kind of brushes, it's fine for me that I don't love to pack on too much blush on because it's not that dense and it will blend the color easily through the contour and the highlight, creating a perfect in between. And it also, it's a little bit of shimmers in it so that it's not a flat color that you're putting and it's so pinky but natural looking. To the other side, just a little bit, not too much. Next up, we have the lashes. Let's put on mascara, but before I do, I always curl them in. This one is a um, eyelash curler from Sephora. I chose it, guess why? <laughs> because of the color. This color is stunning to me. And again, mirror. So this is a tool. This looks like something that put you in there. The first time I used it, I was so scared. I kept blinking and blinking and blinking and my I tried so hard and then when I finally got to put this in my lashes i thought oh my god that's it so don't be afraid guys this is your friend like one two three four five done one two three four five i don't know if you can tell the difference but I think you always have to curl your lashes before mascara because it helps your mascara to perform better than ever. I'm using the Maybelline Classic Volume Express Mascara. This one is really good at lengthening your lashes and also to volumize them. It gives me almost a false lash effect that I, that I really love. It's a little bit old. I think you should keep your mascara till three months and then you have to throw it away. This is one month and a half, something like that. So. Let's go. Oh my god, you guys. Look at the difference. Look at the difference between this and that. This and that. This. Okay, stop. <laughs> the other eye. Done. Now let's move on to lips. I decided to go with this NYX liquid sweater. It's a cream lipstick in the shade Sandstorm. Let's put it on. Let me grab a mirror. Really like this formula. It's a cream lipstick so it doesn't dry out your lips but still color payoff it's so good and in just one swipe like poo -poo. Last but not least, let's fix everything in place with this one is from Essence, it's the Keep It Perfect Makeup Fixing Spray. For me personally, if you think you need a dupe for the Urban Decay All Nighter, this one will do, will do the job. This is my tried and true, I, I really like it. So what you need is just two thousand coats of this stuff. And then what I suggest you to do, it's not to keep it like this and go all the way to your day, but to set it by fanning with a fan. Always keeping a fan in my makeup station. Now listen, this might look a little bit extra, but I confess, it's something that I'm doing on a daily basis, is to spritz some of the Smashbox Photo Finish Water Primer on the face because it gives you a more skin-like finish, absorbs all the powders that you have on the skin, leaving you with baby soft skin. That's it you guys, I hope you enjoyed my everyday makeup and then I give you tips and tricks on a daily basis where you can blend correctly, you can prime your face, you know how to prep your skin and all of this good stuff. Hope to see you on the next one, bye bye!